What is up ladies and gentlemen, it is Legion here guys, and today we are back with some more Clash Royale of course, and guys, today I'm going to be talking about something that I feel like a lot of you might have questions about, or have been trying to do for a while now, and that is, the best way to probably get to 4,000 trophies or higher guys. Now, if anyone knows how to get past 4,000, I think I'm pretty capable guys. First of all, I've been around 4,000 literally since I was a level 9. I got here as a level 9 at 4,000, I think I was like one of the few level 9s to ever get to 4,000 or something, because... Every ma battle I was in, it was 10s, 11s, I never matched up with another level 9. Every time I was in a match, people were like, wow, people were saying stuff like that. To be fair though, it was when the Lava Hound first came out, so it was like super, super strong. And I was using a Lava Hound graveyard deck, I remember that perfectly. And yeah guys, I got here as level 9, and I've pretty much been here since level 9, 10, 11, and I'm about to be 12 as you guys can see. I literally need like, what, 20,000 more XP and I'm level 12? So. I've pretty much been within 4,000 to like 43, 4,400. The highest I've gone is like 4,500. Let's take a look. Yep, highest is, nope, where is it? 45, 41. So I've been pretty much from 4,000 to 4,500 about this whole time, guys. And now the reason for that is because around 4,000, guys, is when you hit the metaphorical wall, which is where people just start having cards that are like max, if not close to max already. And my cards, being a free to play player, I've never spent money on cards and stuff. I have spent money on getting gems so I could start a tournament, 1,000 man tournament for you guys. That's the only time I've ever used money though. I've never like bought these chests with it, I've never done anything from here like that. So you know, I've literally never enhanced my stuff by using money. And I don't know if other people do or don't up here, but all I know is they've got pretty much max cards. And you have a hard time anytime you face up against pretty much max cards guys, you're just gonna have a hard time. It's just the way it is. So in today's video guys, I'm going to be giving you guys at least three tips on how I was able to kind of bypass the fact that people just had higher cards than I did and get to 4,000 trophies so you guys can get this sick draft chest and you get to choose the cards you want and maybe even keep going, going, going until you no longer can guys. So with that being said guys, let's get right into the tips and tip number one guys is you want to use cards that are, not this deck, that are high leveled. Now, it makes sense, right? Everybody's got their high level cards, like level 13 comms and level 11 rares and stuff. And you should do something similar. I know probably yours aren't close to that. Maybe they are. I know mine aren't. Literally, my highest rare is a level 9. I don't have any level 10 rares. My last highest legendary, legendary I can't speak, is level 3. And my highest epic is level 6. And my highest commons are level 12s. So, you know, I'm kind of in. Eh, I'm, I'm up and down, sort of. I mean... Uh, I've people up here all have like 10 and 11 rares people up here have six and seven epics people up here have yeah Like level three legendary. I think that's one of the few cards that I have pretty high up there But I mean electro wizard isn't gonna win a match by himself and level 12 comments are pretty good for being up here Even though people mostly have 12s and 13s. I have 12 so I'm okay with it So that was tip number one guys. It makes sense, right? If you want to fight up against people who have high level cards You got to use your own and now tip number two is a pretty important one you want to check out the elixir cost guys now what i mean by that is i have seen people with uh, you might think of my first tip right and be like oh look all these cards are max commons let's put them in there because they're my highest level cards no do not do that i beg you don't do that guys because i mean come on it's pretty obvious you're not going to win with level 13 common bats minions archers spear goblins and all this stuff okay so you want to have a good balance you want to not make your deck too expensive and a pretty cheap deck works sometimes but then that usually means you don't have really tanky stuff or like you don't have something super like high dps damage per second i mean you could you could have like a mini pekka and that could be like one of your cheap cards still but um Cheaper decks aren't really the problem, it's mostly expensive decks. I have seen people running things like Golem and with a Mega Knight and then with a Lightning. I've seen that and it's in your mind it works, you're like, okay, the Golem's gonna tank for the Mega Knight, the Mega Knight's gonna get rid of everything on the floor that could splash damage it, and then the Lightning will get rid of like the Inferno Tower or Inferno Dragon, whatever, and then you have like other stuff to help out. In your mind it works guys, but it almost never works in real gameplay because it's just too expensive. You're not probably not even gonna get it off. And if you do, they might rush your other lane and you got nothing to defend with. So always check your elixir cost. If you know you're gonna run something heavy, you wanna run an elixir pump at least. Elixir pumps are super good guys. I've seen a lot of them. I'm almost getting into level nine. I just need a little more gold. Almost there guys. So that's tip number two. Don't have it too expensive. And if you do, have an elixir pump or at least have cards you can defend with. Don't be crazy about it, come on. Tip number three guys is, in my opinion, the most important tip, and that's have a defensive deck. Guys, I'm not gonna say who it is. Somebody, a few people in my tribe, my tribe, a few people in my clan 
have decks that consist of things like uh, Giant, uh, Hog Rider, Elite Barbarians, Rage Spell, Goblin Barrel. Now, all those five cards are completely offensive cards. Elite Barbarians are offensive, guys. I mean, you could use them on defense, but they're so expensive that it's not... It's not worth it most of the time. And then Hog Rider, what's that going to do on defense? Run away. Same with the Giant. Goblin Barrel is just sad on defense, guys. If you have to use a Goblin Barrel, it's in desperate times. Not as one of your main defenses. And then Rage is just... Unless you're going to Rage the King's Tower or the Princess Towers, guys. Which you shouldn't be doing in the first place. Don't do that. Just... You got to have a defensive deck. Look at this. Okay. Let me give you an example. I'll be right back. Alright, we're back. Take a look at this deck, guys. This is the deck that I was pretty much showing you guys last video and just look at the cards I mean the only really offensive card here is the golem and that's used for my pushes it's my kill card but everything else can be used as great defense the knight is super tanky and really cheap so it can tank for a lot of things it can tank for a mega knight for a super great elixir trade it can tank for another knight that a lot of people run it could tank for execution it could tank for Valkyrie. whatever you want guys the knight is so reliable in that way electro wizard does splash damage mixed in with the zap it can get rid of minion hordes it can get rid of a bunch of stuff like that guys and the resets like sparkies and infernal towers and infernal dragons so it's super great on defense too and it stuns them so it makes them last even longer to do something infernal dragon is like pure defense guys against golems lava hounds balloons giants all that stuff all right goblins very cheap very affordable great distraction card that can also do a lot of dps against the hog rider or against anything else really then you got the Tombstone guys, which in my opinion is one of the best defensive cards. I mean, it's so cheap and it just keeps shooting out skeletons guys that distracts and that annoys and that keeps building up damage. And then it lures troops to the middle so your towers can help it. And then the Elixir Pump is just used to like build up more Elixir to use all these stuff. And while I'm cycling through defensive cards, I can keep placing Elixir Pumps down guys. And so this deck is all pretty much at least 85 or to 90% defense. And then the Golem is really my only offensive card. And that's how a deck should be, guys. It should be focused around defense, because think about it. If you can defend well, what's the worst that can happen? A tie. The worst that can happen is a tie, guys. You're going to tie, and then if, you, if you're able to defend well, you can tie. If you know you're not going to win, you can tie. But maybe you get a good push-off, you get a great push-off, and you can win. So, best case scenario is a win. Worst case scenario, if you can defend well with a good defensive deck, is a tie. So you won't lose trophies, and then you could just kind of fix something if you realize, like, oh, maybe this deck is missing more air defense. Maybe this deck doesn't need the elixir pump, you know, stuff like that. So with that being said, guys, let me give you guys at least one or two battles with this deck just to show you guys exactly how I would play it, what goes through my mind. Okay, level 12, please don't ruin this video for me. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to play Tombstone first in the middle. A little off to the right side because I feel like people usually come down my right lane when they when they push. Uh, they could switch it now that they see that, but I think we'll be fine. Okay, so he's got a dark goblin. I'm gonna surround it with my own goblins. Boss. I'm not too worried about the bats. Let's see what he does against the goblins. I'm okay with sitting on elixir just because. Okay, so he's gonna go there. Most of them are coming to the left. I'll defend the left. Ice spirit. Okay, I'm thinking he's gonna go. Yep, there it is. Ooh, perfect zap there. And that hog is still going to get a lot of damage, guys. That's a max level hog, like I said. They're okay. All right. That tower is probably down. We're going to set up an elixir pump, guys. Was looking at the camera and didn't have time to react. We're in big trouble, but we're fine. We're fine. No, we're fine. We're fine. Believe me, we're fine. Dark Goblin, we got to place this here quick. Okay. Dark Goblin! Yeah. All right, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. He hasn't even seen my tombstone yet. Actually, yeah, that was the first card I played. All right, so now we got an elixir pump down, though. And does he have a spell of any sorts? Right there. Night tank. Boom. Is it lagging? The night. Okay, well, that can happen. And then he's going to freeze. No, he's going to zap instead. Okay. That was a terrible spot, actually. But where else was I supposed to put it? Now we're building elixir pumps. And let's see what we can do here. Not too worried about the bats taking it up. Goblin's ready. Yeah. Surround sound. We're good. We're fine. And now we're going to push with the golem. I haven't seen anything really that he can actually use against my golem. Except maybe skeleton army. But I have Zap for that. Uh, he hasn't really had anything I can use my infernal dragon on. So he's kind of going to waste. But I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Getting ready with that tombstone right here. Not here. He might freeze just to take out that elixir pump. I did, yeah. Oh, ooh, but the skeleton survived, guys, after it broke and they got him. All right, here we go. Infernal Dragon. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. I know he's got a skelly army, so don't don't think I don't know that. He's going to place this here. Oh, 
oh, oh, he's waiting. Oh, he's waiting. Nope. I think he, he gave up. I think he knows there's no point. And he's given up, guys. See that? We had a great defensive deck. Even if he got a quick jump on us, guys, we were able to come back. No problem. Level 12 taken out. Let's move on to at least one more battle. Okay, so I realized the volume, I had him muted for that battle. That's a shame. So there's probably no audio there, guys. So, um, forgive me. But here we go. We're gonna fix this one. I turned the audio back on. I realized, I was like, why is it too quiet? It's a little too quiet. Alright, we're gonna place this here. Hopefully that Ice Spirit jumps. Because I already know he's gonna rush this left side. I don't think he's gonna send all that just to rush the right side. So we're good. We're fine. There's the Knight. And I'm gonna start with my Infernal Dragon. In the back left. I don't want to, I don't want to do it in the back center here because as it moves up he could fireball or something our goblins here not too worried about that executioner we got the and we take that out pretty quickly we got the knight here in fact i'm gonna place a pump right there because i'm that confident guys Ooh, ooh. yep i'm that confident i'm that confident guys we're gonna take this man out uh, just seeing his cards already i think we have the perfect counters to his deck so here he comes over here bro and then we got another tombstone just in case. I'm thinking he's gonna rush the right side. Okay, perfect. See, that's why I don't place them right here and like the elixir pump right here. I could catch all that, guys, and that's not something you wanna do. We're gonna start with our golem in the left side. Oh, he was close, but he did not get it. All right, now we're at an advantage, guys. Use a poison, use a tornado, all for no reason, really. I mean, he took out the elixir pump, so I guess it was fine, but I still got two pumps off. So now let's see what he does. Let's see what he does. I'm gonna zap the skeletons, get the Inferno Dragon, and hopefully lock on to the Executioner. Alright, good, good, he's locked on. Let's zap that. If the Knight could stop leaving... Oh, thanks, man, you put it closer. The Knight just kept leaving, and my Inferno Dragon, poor thing, just kept resetting. Get rid of that Executioner! Alright, we're good. We're good. We're good. And we're gonna get some decent damage off there. I'm ready for his hog. I'm ready for his hog, guys. For sure he's gonna try to counter, maybe. Alright, and now he has a poison, so this time I'm going to place my elixir pump on the opposite side with the stronger tower. So if he wants to poison, he's going to have to poison. And I'm going to place my tombstone up higher. So it has to go all the way over here. He can't... Uh, see what I did? See what I did? <laughs> he didn't catch it. And now hog is going to get nothing, boys. We are looking strong, looking too good against this other level 12. Start with the goal on the back. Usually in double elixir, I do like to play it in the middle. But at this point, I feel like we can defend anything he's got and he's throwing at us. So I'm not too worried. I'm going to place the infernal dragon here to get rid of him. Alright, here we go. Electro Wizard all the way in the back left. Tombstone in the same spot. A little preemptively, so this time he would know if you know it were to happen. There's his poison. He's gonna go like that now, so I'll place go goblins over here to sneak around while the executioner switches. The golem's already made it. He's tornadoing everything, so that's pretty annoying, but I think we'll still be good. I think we'll still be good. Everything's really tanky, and it explodes in the tower. And we're gonna zap this bad boy. Don't look over there. He used the log. Let's send in our goblins, guys. And this one is pretty much over. He's just tornadoing at this point, trying to trying to stop what he can. But I think I should probably uh, reset a push here, because if not, he might be able to just tornado, execution, or defend everything. So, here comes Golem in the center. We only have 50 seconds. We, we can do it. I don't think he's going to be pushing at this point. I think he knows he has no hope. See, there's his executioner. So we're going to go Infernal Dragon here. He's going to log it now. Zap that. Electro Wizard. See, now he's just, he's just, that's what he's doing at this point. That's what he's doing at this point. Oh, the Golem escapes though. One punch Golem. He explodes on the tower. He missed it. He missed it. Come on, go. I don't have any big spells here, boys. So really, it, 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 uh, no, I think he's going to defend. <laughs> I think he's going to defend. Oh man, Executioner Tornado, guys, is very deadly, actually. Yeah, he defended. All right, well. I'll give him a thumbs up. He had some good defense, guys. See, he, he had a good defensive deck. Executioner Tornado was able to defend. And then, I'll zap it one more time. And he was able to prevent the win. But I should have won that in all honesty if I had more of an offensive deck. But my deck was more defensive. So maybe you guys might trade something out for a little more offensive style if you so wish. So guys, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you guys actually got some helpful stuff out of this. Um, 
like you guys saw there, it was a win and a tie when I really should have won the second one, but the guy had a good defensive deck. Executioner and Tornado was honestly one of the top defenses, in my opinion, top defensive combos for sure, and that's how he was able to prevent me from winning. I was this close if I had like a fireball or a poison, so maybe I'll consider switching out the zap for something like that, poison maybe or something, but it's really up to you guys in the end. Just try to use high level cards, think defensively, and check the cost, guys. That's pretty much it, all right? I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, I hope you guys get to 4,000 trophies and higher. Legion, out.